morning, everyone. We are the candidate team from Tohoku University. Today, we are so glad to share with you our plan for Indonesia to respond to and prepare for natural disasters with special interest on tsunami and earthquake. To begin with, I would like to give a brief introduction on Indonesia. Indonesia, officially the Republic of Indonesia, is known as the Southeast Asia's largest economy. With total population of 254.5 million, Indonesia is becoming one of the emerging market economies of the world. The special capital region of Jakarta, located on the northwest coast, is the capital and the largest city of Indonesia. According to official data of Indonesia in 2014, the population is estimated to be over 30 million and one third of the total population is living in the central area of Jakarta, which is much larger than New York City and Singapore. Being located on the Pacific Ring of Fire, Indonesia has to cope with constant risk of volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, earthquakes, and floods. On several occasions during the last 15 years, Indonesia has made global headlines due to devastating nature disasters that resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of human lives. As we can see from data picked from the National Report from 1990 to 2016, earthquakes are probably the biggest threat regarding nature disasters in Indonesia as they come sudden and can strike in popular areas. A World Bank publication in October 2010 expressed its concern that a magnitude 8 earthquake could probably destroy a mega city such as Jakarta. According to the data of BNPB, Jakarta is considered to be the one of the most dangerous cities in Indonesia. It is not only physically and physiologically horrifying, nature disasters are also financially frightening. An earthquake in big cities such as Jakarta can lead to horrible property damage and even stop economic activities, which constantly result in significant financial problems in all over the world. Thus, we started to think about how we could design our disaster risk reduction plan in Jakarta the largest city and most at-risk region in Indonesia with special focus on those communities that have been ignored so far. We think disaster education is not sufficient in the view of lifelong education. Indonesian government enforces several laws to make safe schools and earthquake-resilient building since late 2000. Now, national and local governments, other international institutions and many local schools are making efforts to build resilient societies against natural disasters, especially earthquake and tsunami. The main target of their policies is schools, because school is the center of evacuation and the center of learning activities for both children and community. Then, how about people outside school? Disaster education outside school is not sufficient. One of the reasons is that educational centers for adults are not common. Schools sometimes give activities related to natural disaster for community people, but it is not obligatory. So if people are not aware of the importance of that kind of activity, they would not participate in it. The other reason is that once you finish compulsory education, you lose opportunities to gather and study unless you are eager to learn about natural disasters and disaster preparedness. Furthermore, children before elementary school do not often go to preschool, so they miss the opportunities to get disaster education. I would like to give an example to show how people outside school are prone to be affected by natural disasters. The 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan caused unexpected huge tsunami 
leading to 16,000 deaths. Most of them were killed by tsunami. In Japan, schools play an important role in preparing to natural disasters, especially earthquakes and tsunamis. In the big earthquake in 2011, 56 schools were hit by tsunami. All children in most of them successfully evacuated, and the pupils in two schools were only victims. On the other hand, this graph shows people outside of schools likely failed to evacuate from tsunami. Tohoku area is prone to earthquakes and tsunamis. There were several big tsunamis there in these decades, so elderly people in tsunami areas must know how feared tsunami was. But many elderly thought this area must be safe because tsunamis didn't hit here before and decided to stay or go home according to their experience. This story tells us that experience is not enough and sometimes even misleads people. Therefore, continuous opportunities to know how to prepare to and how to evacuate from natural disasters are very crucial, and lack of those chances are a problem. We want our project to reach many people in order to support lifelong education. And how can we solve the problem? This time, we will focus on digital education by using a new kind of learning method, that is gamification at the hospital in the college. So why did we choose hospitals as a places for disaster education? A disaster education in school is already done but it is not enough as I said before. Because we can't expect when such disaster occurs, it is important to continue lifelong education to develop the knowledge and the skills. In hospital, people of all ages come to the hospitals to take hospitalization or outpatient service with their family. Moreover, the national insurance ensures people regardless of their income to have access to the hospitals. Therefore, the new type of disaster education is to be transferred to all level of people. Recently, the word gamification has been gathering attention. Gamification is the application of game elements to non-game problems, such as education, business, and social impact challenges. The biggest effect of gamification is that people can remember what they actually behave. Passive education, such as using a textbook, is not enough as said before. In fact, recent disaster educations have been conducted by using a crossword game, which is one kind of gamification. However, it even has two problems. First one is that it doesn't have enough entertainment elements to attract people. Another one is it doesn't include visual elements to help the players imagine the disaster situation clearly. To overcome these problems, we decided to make a new kind of games for disaster education by combining novel games and virtual reality. By using this new game, people, especially children, can learn about digital preparedness with their own free will because of its enjoyment. Moreover, they can get the chance to experience their digital situation through virtual reality. In addition to this new game, we plan to hold some workshops in the hospital to promote not only children, but also adults to use it. So how we are going to read this project? First, we are developing new VR-based interactive novel game. You can take the opportunity both to run knowledge of how to act in emergency and to practice using that knowledge by simulating in the game with VR. The biggest point is that the player can learn with fun, unlike other existing instructive way. This is from the images when playing the game. 
players are given multiple choices and will select what they see as correct behavior. If they select the right behavior, they can go on to the following story, but if they chose wrong, they will see the disaster result. Targeting people in various ages will use popular or approachable character in Indonesia, for example, Pokemon. The Pokemon company developed Poketouch, a software to study basic subjects for children, and now this system is introduced for free in part of school in Cambodia as their CSR activity. Second, we will make some room to experience real game around the corner of hospital. And holding some workshop on time, we will make opportunity to use the game for not only patients but also ordinary people in the community. From now on, we are gonna show how we'll actually implement our project. Look at the flowchart. This is a rough timeline of our project. For the first year, the VL game software will be invented, which process includes to write a scenario in association with disaster education experts and to make some VL movies with VL vendors. At the same time, we'll develop the plan so that we can install the VL game to all the hospitals in the week and the hospital staff can manage it efficiently. It will be done with the help of Consortium for Disaster Education in Nature, which is a nationwide organization giving a disaster education supported by the Ministry of National Education. In the next year, the VL headsets and our VL game software will be installed to all the hospitals in Jakarta and that will be available to all the inpatients and outpatients. Each hospital will host some community workshops to let them know new VO games are available so that they can keep coming to experience. After a year of implementation, we are going to assess its effectiveness. After replacing the drawbacks and improving, the games will be available again. The next chart illustrates how our budget is to be spent. It mainly consists of three directions. Firstly, the invention of the VL software is expected to cost $2 million, calculated based on the necessary maintenance and the cost of hiring VL specialists and disaster education experts. $0.7 million will be needed for the instrument of VL headsets to supply one headset per 10 hospitals bed in Jakarta. $1.3 million is for running the community workshops. All the detailed calculation is put in the right side of the slide. The next chart is about how many people will play a new game. It's estimated that the cumulative total of almost 0.96 million inpatients leave the hospitals every year in the county, and all of them have an opportunity to play a real game. We expect 25% of them will actually play. Also, the number of workshop participants is anticipated to reach 30,000 people. Overall, 270,000 people will play a game in the second year. We are going to evaluate how much our project achieved. In evaluating, we have three main criteria to see. First, how many percent of citizens play our game or join the workshop? Second, how our project changes people's behavior? Third, how well people acquire the knowledge about natural disaster and preparedness? Here is our concrete plan of the evaluation. We are going to take a survey of randomly picked students. In the questionnaire, we will ask three questions. First question is whether they went to a hospital or not in that period. The next question is whether or not you used VR game in the hospital. Final question is to check whether or not people take an action for disaster preparedness. To evaluate it, we prepare these questions to measure their knowledge about the disaster and to know what they actually did for it. If VR utilization shows a remarkable change in disaster education, then that method can be applied to other hospitals out of Jakarta. VR game might have the potential to spread to whole nation as well. Moreover, we expect VR games to be used not only in hospitals, but in schools and other community centers.